Hello. I hope uh, you will make it through the next 45 minutes after this lunch break with, again, awesome food. Um, when we created the program, of course, we kept in mind that you will be, you know, oof, you will be happy to sit down again after a lunch break. And so we picked one of the best speakers we have for the after lunch <laughs> talk. English, please. <laughs> Every one of us uh, works as part of a team one way or another. And from his personal experience and his podcast, he will share insights into successful team setups. It is a pleasure for me <laughs> to announce the co-founder of Flow Native, longtime NEOS team member, and one, if we can say that, of the most helpful people in the NEOS community. Please welcome on stage Christian Müller. All right. <laughs> that is great expectations, I guess. Uh, Toby uh, took some part of the introduction for this talk, so it's actually... Um, I put this talk up as an idea because I love working in teams and I worked a lot in teams lately and learned a lot through that and also started this podcast uh, about teamwork. So it seemed like a good idea to combine that knowledge with uh, learnings from NEOS projects and put it into one talk to um, look at how working with NEOS in a team uh, makes sense and uh, is enjoyable and gives you great results. Now, there are some aspects to that uh, which we'll go through that I realized while making this talk. And at first, the idea for the talk sounded great and it was obviously uh, accepted as a talk to this conference, so others also th thought it sounds great. Uh, in fact, while creating a talk, I realized that um, working with NEOS and working in a team are two things that don't have too much overlap mm. after all. So um, the, the combination that I wanted to show is not as intense as I hoped myself. Um, that is one of the learnings of this talk, for example, that you can um, apply uh, learnings from NEOS projects very well, and you can apply learnings from teams very well, and just put them together without thinking too much of the other thing. So, um, first learning for you. Um, my very long winding talk title contained success and perfect, and it was pretty pretty much, so I did two titles, an, a NEOS team for success and a perfect NEOS team. Um, you can choose. Um, but then boiling this down to perfect team. Now, perfect team obviously depends very much on the metrics you apply. What is a perfect team? Why is it perfect? So um, that definitely depends on you and what you think about perfect. For me, as someone working in teams and with teams, it's obviously the culture and atmosphere in the actual team, the working together, um, how, it, it, how it is with, with the other people, the connection to other persons, and creating something awesome together. That's, for me, um, the direction a perfect team should take. But obviously, that might be different for you. Um, but then there's a sec second fact. The perfect team. Who here, raise your hands if you say, I worked in a perfect team. I work or worked. All right, two people. That's, hmm? that's what I wanted to, exactly, that's the point. Um, yes, there is such a thing as a really nice team and you feel it's perfect. But after all, it's all about learning and improving. That's part of the mindset I want to talk about. So 
perfect is pretty absolute. Like there is nothing better. And probably you might have a time in your life where you work in a team and it's the perfect thing. Like you, you, you have the feeling there will come nothing better in your lifetime. So that's fine. It's the perfect team for you. That's, that's perfectly fine to call it like that. But in general, um, you always want to avoid thinking about being in the perfect team because that automatically means there cannot be anything better. And that prevents you from improving, maybe. So, um, yeah, I see Gina looking around and I, I know what you think, but I feel you take away you take away the uh, a way to improve yourself if you think you are done it's the same as i know everything i don't need to learn anything any anymore so um just look at that so basically uh the teams i worked with and some of them were pretty perfect already but still uh there is always stuff to improve so let's talk about uh what i really liked and where i think or where i feel uh, even all the teams I worked with, there could have been improvements after all. Um, so one thing is experts, and this is again a pretty controversial topic. Um, you don't want to have people that only uh, focus on exactly one thing. That's also bad because they will not go out of their domain and not, not discuss with other people. But still you want to have people that know one thing very well because then you know you, who you can ask but they should still look left and right. And you see the shape, it's a T-shape. That's a T-shaped person. And you want this kind of people that have a core and some lefts and rights that they can also perform with. Um, I really like to work with those kind of people because um, I know, oh, this person, they know design very well or user experience, so I can, I can discuss that with them. But they will still not look at me uh, like I'm an alien if I talk about technology stuff. Um, yes. Um, so experts, but people that think outside of the expert box, that's very important. And that are willing to look at other skill sets that are outside of their expert domain. Then the second thing that I feel is super important, especially in NEOS projects, uh, if they grow a bit bigger, is um, some person that keeps the information managed. Uh, however you want to call that person, but it can be multiple persons, but there must be people that somehow um, manage all the stuff that the clients uh, put in to the project and uh, make it into something that you can actually work with. Because usually client information is very raw and uh, <laughs> uh, very chaotic. Uh, so you need someone that understands information and can split it into usable parts, uh, remove the stuff that's useless. And um, in some systems that's called a product owner. Um, you can call it something else, but you want this kind of person. If you just have a team of developers uh, and no one is actually doing this, uh, you will have a lot of problems because you probably don't understand uh, the expectations of the client and all the information they give you perfectly. So I always value if I have a person that can do this role pretty well. <laughs> and you know who I'm thinking of. So, yes. Um, then another thing you need in a good team is the self-inspection. Um, you always want to look at how it's working at the moment, what is happening. Um, you want to, to learn from the current project, even if that might not even apply still to the current project. You want to take that knowledge out and take it to the next project, uh, especially in NEOS. I mean, uh, we don't talk about 10 super different projects. Of course, the, the, the domains of the website will be very different. But if you do 10 NEOS websites, there's a lot of learnings you can get from that that you can apply to the next nine NEOS projects. So um, you want to always uh, self-inspect, uh, figure out what worked, um, what didn't work, um, look at the mistakes, uh, find out why it went wrong, and try to generalize it for future usage. Um, that's always good. But also remember the victories, the things that worked well. 
Remember that, keep it in mind for later, uh, reuse those, uh, those things that work well. So um, yeah, improve, uh, improve your workflow in the next project from whatever you gained in the last project. Um, and obviously, uh, with the next one, if you use an iterative approach in your project, um, however that might look like, um, you can actually do the self-inspection uh, every, every uh, iteration, so not even only per project, but per sprint or however you call your iterations. Um, so I've, there were a lot of other talks about um, Agile stuff, so I don't go into detail about an iterative approach. Um, I think everyone has seen it one way or the other, but uh, in general, um, you always want to have a fixed cycle in which you produce value and then inspect what happened, uh, adapt, and in the end, restart the next cycle with the information you gained from the last one. And also there, uh, again, the person managing the information is super important because uh, to start the next cycle, you absolutely need to have all the knowledge ready from the cycles before and the new information that came in the last cycle um, to make the next cycle something better. Right, so that is more of the, uh, let's say, operative things that I enjoy in teams. Um, now more to the, let's call it people side of things. Um, one core value that I um, feel is very important and that's very important to me um, is vulnerability. Um, it's for me, that is my personal thing. I feel very good in a team where I don't have an issue being vulnerable with the other team members, uh, where I don't have a problem to um, admit that I made a mistake or that something is going wrong or um, I don't know, that I'm sick, whatever. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of ingrained problems in, in society, basically, talking about things like that. Uh, people go to work super sick because they think it's expected by, uh, from, from them. Um, and for me, it's always important to be in a group of people that is uh, accepting in vulnerabilities and understands if uh, something goes wrong and you can talk to them um, and we can solve it together. Um, obviously, from that, uh, the next important value for me um, comes around, which is trust. Um, and that goes in two ways. I need to trust all my teammates, obviously. That's super important. I need to be sure that uh, whatever we discuss in the team uh, stays in the team, that, um, that I can rely on them, but also that I can rely on their work. If they build this bridge, I want to be sure that I can stand in the middle and it doesn't break down, right? Um, that's part of being a team somehow. So that's super important for me um, to know if I'm away for two weeks, uh, the bridge is still standing afterwards. Um, so vulnerability and trust are for me personally the highest values in teams that I work with. Um, but that is a personal thing. So you might apply something different to your teams and your work experience. Um, then there's a third core value that um, where I feel the word is difficult, but respect is the right word, but it has uh, connotations that I personally don't apply to it uh, in this context. But I feel it's important to have respect for each other's personality and also each other's work, obviously. Um, so um, you should obviously try to criticize other people's work well, not criticize, uh, give feedback, but not be negative about it. So um, respect uh, what other people did and how they work. Um, I don't mean respect for titles and respect for uh, elders and people that work longer in the company, uh, respect for clients. That's all not what I mean with this. 
Uh, that's why I find this word kind of difficult, but I hope you understand uh, what kind of value I'm talking about. Um, the respect, the feeling towards the other team members and their work. So that is my core values personally that I take away from teamwork and um, that is the atmosphere I like to work in. Then there's obviously more to it, more stuff around that is not only team specific, but I noticed that I really like to have uh, something like an open space, uh, sometimes called agency day, uh, bar camps, however you want to call this, um, some place where um, you can exchange ideas beyond the current project with other people. Um, you can discuss solutions, you can discuss future plans, you can experiment. Um, it's something just outside the project scope. And I really like that, first of all, because it gives a different perspective on people, because uh, it's not the typical project situation you work in. And um, secondly, it, it opens time and a place for experimentation and gaining knowledge that is not applying to the current project at all. So um, it might help for the future. It might just um, bring you to new ideas or new directions. And um, I always enjoyed that, having, having such an event um, in teams or in places I worked with teams. Um, yeah, I can only recommend doing that. Um, so a few more things that I also find quite important, but that I think can always be improved, and that I uh, that were obviously not missing in the projects I worked with or teams I worked with, but that I always felt hmm, it's not it's not perfect yet. So one thing is obviously communication. Communication is super hard. Uh, the more people, the more difficult. Um, and you need communication. For a good team and a good outcome for a project, you need a lot of communication. Uh, so improving communication is always worth it, uh, but it's also a hard task. Um, but this is something I feel almost all the teams I worked with had some communication bottlenecks, some communication problems, some unspoken about problems um, or difficulties between persons. And um, rooting all this out is, is definitely a super way to improve your team and uh, do results from the team. Um, and that als also goes to the client, obviously. Um, the team is the first line basically where you want to improve your communication but without good communication to the client um, it doesn't help because you still miss out on the final result because you didn't have all the information because your communication was not good so um, really something to look at um, the second thing that is also pretty important to me but that I also felt is lacking in almost all the teams I worked with, and it's pretty clear where that comes from. Uh, it's usually time or money issues. Um, we all have a stressful job in an agency. It's usually very tight schedules or very tight budgets. Um, so the ownership is often lacking uh, because you just want to get, get, it, get it done, basically. But I think having ownership of a product in a team. Everyone feels responsible, feels uh, they are creating something uh, they like and they, um, they want to keep, they want to maintain actually, um, is a very important part of what we do and it just gives you a higher quality in the result that your client might not even notice but your team will notice and whoever is maintaining that code or that website in the long run will notice if the team took full ownership of the product uh, because it will be tested, it will be quality maintained, uh, it will be well made in all parts. And this is something that is often lacking in some places. 
Uh, some agencies take uh, take more look on the testing, some more on this, some more on that. But um, I often feel there's there's uh, there's parts that that are missed out and that could could be improved by even more um, giving the ownership to the team and saying, look, this is your product. Um, be proud of it, but make it something to be proud of as well. So, um, pretty hard thing. And um, another thing that I feel is difficult in the daily business of many agencies, but is important for the future, and that's obviously the problem. The current project, yeah, we will manage it somehow, and then there's the next project, yeah, we will manage it somehow, and then it's like, five years later and uh, another project and we will manage it somehow like we did it the last 20,000 times in the last projects. Um, but obviously everything is changing, right? Technology is changing, uh, the world is changing, so you want to be prepared for the future. And how can you do that? You need to do uh, experimentation, you need to try stuff, uh, you need to look at new stuff. And um, that's obviously a time problem. So um, I often see, yeah, we will just use this solution because we did it before and it, it should kind of work in this project as well. It's not optimal. I, I read some article about, I don't know, a technology that could work better, but I don't know how it works and no one here knows how it works and it will probably take ages to implement that, so mm, rather not in this project. Um, but that's, it will never happen in the project. Uh, that is, again, why open spaces might be super important for you. Uh, if you cannot put it in a project, put it in an open space. Uh, write down these things where, where you felt, hmm, in this, in this project we might have done this, but we didn't have time. Okay, but then note it down for the next open space. Make an experiment, see how it works. Maybe you can even put it back into the project if it's not too late. But um, you need to find a way to get experimentation in your team and in your projects, ideally, um, so you're ready for the future and you have a broader scope of possible solutions for problems that might come at some point in the future. Um, but that's also something I feel is always difficult to get in many teams. And I want to close this part with the last point that is pretty neutral, which is called culture. I kept it in the gray because it it's every time every team has a different culture, every agency has a different culture, and I cannot say for me personally, which of the teams or, or people or agencies I worked with um, had the best culture? Uh, obviously, the NEOS team. Uh, we, I shouldn't say. Obviously, the NEOS team. What else, right? <laughs> but in general, cultures are super different. And they can still, two very different cultures can both be wonderful and can work. And you can work with both of them. But uh, there's no, I mean, there's no comparison. It's just two different cultures. So um, you should have a look at the culture in your team and in your agency, uh, see if it fits, if it's consistent, and if it represents what you actually want to do. If it works with all the previous things I said, if nothing in this culture prevents any of the values or any of the uh, methodologies I said before, uh, from applying. If your culture prevents any of that, if it prevents <laughs> trust, if it prevents respect, uh, you might want to change your culture. But in general, I don't <laughs> say this culture is good, this is bad, it's too, too difficult and too diverse depending on uh, your individual uh, group of people. So, and all that, all what I said before, um, there's a, obviously a why question. Why do you want that? And as I said, this is my personal experience. This is, this is my takeaways, my personal values that I like to see in teams and projects. And 
I don't know. I don't know about you. And I don't know about all the developers in your companies and all the designers in your companies, but we are all knowledge workers. Uh, we don't work machines. Uh, we, we want to create something. We want to maybe invent something. Um, we don't just want to do the same thing every day again and again. And for me, that is very well represented by this uh, famous quote. And um, it's, it's basically at my heart and all the values and everything I explained before. Um, this is the starting point. If I have to do the same thing every day, this will happen. And I will have no fun working. I don't want to work. I will not put any effort in it. I will not produce good results. And um, it is just not the way I want to work. And in the area we work in, it should be possible to get this, this small bit of fun, of invention, of experimentation, of new. Um, all that is basically what the NEOS team does. But obviously, you want that in your daily business as well. So um, make sure that your teams are not that. Because otherwise, you can just have a, I don't know, a factory uh, with people in it, and they will have the same feeling. All right, this is the start. My personal ideas about this. Uh, you can take it or leave it. It's just something I learned. But now we should look at something totally different, uh, more NEOS related, actually. And that is skills, obviously. Because if you want to create an, a team for an NEOS project, you need certain skills. And you don't need other skills. You probably don't need a Java developer in most NEOS projects. Because NEOS is based on PHP. So for me, there's like four super high level, obviously. The problem is, this is a generic talk. I don't know about your NEOS projects. You will have lots and lots of detailed skills that you need. In the end, you might need good English skills for a NEOS project. But that is depending on your project and how you work and um, a lot of other things. And I don't want to go into that level of detail. So we are, look, we are really looking at high level here. And for that, there's obviously uh, the one major thing, that is user experience. We are talking about a CMS, so you, you probably will want to have some kind of user experience. And even if you do an application with just a framework, you will have some kind of user experience. You might say, ah, our client doesn't care about user experience. Yes, but you will still will have, you will have some. So who, someone needs to create that user experience. So you need at least some level of skill, even if it's bad, but you need user experience skill in some way in your project. Uh, you can replace that by design, right? So uh, if you say, yeah, I just have a beautiful, you, know, you, you can. I'm just saying it depends on the project. Uh, in most projects, you will want to have both user experience and design. But if you say, I just do a marketing website and just present in content, well, might be that you need more design than user experience. Um, but for me, I put user experience here because I feel that's the more important part. Uh, the design kind of follows that. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to exclude the designers. So sorry, any designers here. Uh, you are kind of sub-represented there. Um, then you somehow need front end. We are talking about websites. You need front end skills. That is probably the core, the core <laughs> thing you need for a website. Uh, you might need, you might want to, to do an API service with Flow. Okay, you might need not, you might need not, might not need front end, but in probably 95% of all NEOS projects, you need some kind of front end work. Um, then the other side of things, you very probably need some PHP development skills. Not necessarily, that is true. Um, but again, I'm not talking about levels of skills, right? None of this needs to be an expert. I'm not talking about an expert PHP developer. But 
you might need to have heard the word ne uh, PHP and uh, understand where, I don't know, the PHP documentation is um, to create a NEOS project. Uh, you might not be, you might not need much, but I don't know, a WordPress developer sometimes also doesn't need much PHP, but still it's PHP and they, they have some basic understanding. So this, this skill somewhere will appear and help you in a NEOS project. And for me, it's, it's, it's still a, score, uh, a core skill even for small websites. Uh, but again, not maybe not on a high level. And then obviously there's NEOS itself. That includes all the fusion, um, all the configuration stuff. Um, you just have an idea about NEOS, right? You know how to build a website with NEOS. You might not program, you might not create HTML, but you know how to take an HTML template and put it into NEOS and configure NEOS so that in the end there is a website with that HTML and some editor can edit it. Again, different levels, and I'm not talking about the amount of skill you need for any project because that depends on the project, obviously. You might have projects that are very content driven, so you might need three <laughs> expert NEOS people and uh, two front ends and what whatnot. Uh, you have you might have very low end NEOS projects where you do a lot in PHP, not so much in NEOS, so um, the skill set will be different obviously. But those are the four core pillars that I see in a lot of projects uh, with NEOS in some way or the other. So you have something like that. And this is just skills. Again, this is not mapping to people. You can mix and match how you want. Doesn't matter. You somehow need these skills. You can even have one person with all the skills. Um, but then you don't have a team, so I didn't put it down. Um, right? Um, so some of you might think, what about other skills? DevOps, first thing I'm thinking about. Yes, obviously. There's a lot of other skills. Uh, I actually have used Java developers in uh, multiple NEOS projects because there was some external things that used Java that you needed to implement uh, with NEOS together. So um, yeah, obviously you can, ca can use all kinds of skills, but those are highly dependent on the project you do. Um, for starters, this is, this is your core NEOS team in some way or the other. Uh, depending on what kinds of projects you do in your agency, uh, you might need more expert levels here or more expert levels there that I cannot answer, but you want to have those four core skills as a basis for your team somehow. Everything else you can outsource or add to the team as needed. Uh, see DevOps. I mean, if you if you use something like Beach, um, you might not need DevOps or not to that extent. So it's really super super different to uh, each agency and project and team. But um, yeah, those are the core skills you can you can look at. Okay. Finally, we have our skill set. We know roughly what we need for our project. You have looked at the basic idea, the requirements that, that you have, the initial requirements. So um, you have a skill map, you have an idea what you need of skills, um, you find the people for it, and now somehow those people need to work together. And what actually is working together? What is part of working together in a NEOS project or in any technical project? But we are talking about NEOS projects here. So I, this is, I mean, this is a talk that I took from experience and not from reading. So the model I'm showing you is something I quickly thought about because I, it felt natural to me. It's not something from a book. Maybe it is from a book, but then I don't know it. So uh, don't take it, to especially the experts, please uh, be aware that this is just uh, from my experience. And looking at this, I see four areas that kind of relate, obviously, you need all four, but that are somehow um, different in the way um, they need to be tackled, right? So communication is one, one single part, there's a lot in it. Uh, you need to handle communication in a team, in, in working together. You need to figure out how that works with the people you have. Um, 
Second thing is knowledge handling. That's the part about product ownership and storing information. If you have a long-running project, you don't want to forget what you learned a year ago. So you need to figure out for your case how you handle the information you get uh, in a way that you find stuff. Then you have task coordination. People are working on something and you, you need to tra keep track of that and people need to know what everyone is working on. So you need some kind of tool to uh, manage the tasks people work on. And finally, uh, rituals and process. Um, when working together, um, you need to figure out how people interact with each other. And I'm not talking about communication, I'm talking about when is the best time where we all come together? Uh, if you don't have any rituals or any processes, um, in theory, people can work two hours on this time, the next one works two hours there, and you will never have an overlapping time where all your team comes together. Um, so you need to figure that part out in some way as well. And um, there are obviously systems that help you in some parts of this. So um, you can do Kanban or Scrum, both are different kinds of systems to deal with different parts of this. Um, that is something I leave to you. It's uh, not part of this talk and I don't want to talk about it because it's, it's pretty individual and pretty specific and um, I'm not an expert on either of those, so talk to an expert, um, figure out what works for your team and the people you work with um, and decide then what kind of methodology you want to use uh, to organize part of this. What is important is the mindset. Um, all the values and uh, all the stuff I, I talked about before um, together uh, generate some kind of mindset um, that gives you kind of a flexi flexibility and way to work together. So you want to work on that mindset uh, with all the people and uh, figure out if you can come to um, a, something that all agree on. Um, same as decisions, for me it's important that decisions are taken together in a team. Um, so that is also something you need to figure out. How do you want to take decisions? There are very different ways to take decisions if you look into decision taking. Um, so that's also something um, your team needs to figure out and think about. Um, next is obviously the keeping the overview. That's basically the same I said before. You need some way to keep track and keep an overview what is happening, what happened, and uh, what still needs to happen. So that's, uh, that's again, uh, something to figure out for your team. And finally, coming back to our uh, wonderful team people, you often have this kind of pipeline, I call it. Right, you have some user experience or designer here, they deliver something to here, um, they look at it, say, oh yeah, okay, nice uh, design, okay, mm, I cannot do this in HTML, but okay, let's try it like this. So they produce some kind of version from whatever they got here and deliver it to the uh, PHP guy and the PHP guy, guy will may maybe put some functionality here and there on top of it and then you have something and all that goes to the Neos p person that puts it all together and then you have some running system and obviously everything is done and everyone is happy. The client has the perfect website, obviously, that's how it works. Um, usually not, right? So please uh, try to break up this pipeline. Um, I always felt it's super, super hard to work in such kind of pipeline and it, it breaks a lot of the values I talked about before. So I rather enjoy having something like this where everyone is connected and talking to everyone and um, things wander back and forth between people uh, however it's needed. So the Neos person can, can push input to the user experience and the user experience can push input to the Neos person and you develop something uh, together. All right. Um, then for the, for the knowledge management, you might want to look at something like documentation or wiki. Uh, again, there are lots of different solutions that might fit or not fit your special use case in a small team. Uh, just a bit of documentation might be enough to, to handle your knowledge. In bigger projects, you might need some uh, wiki system or anything else, a knowledge base, uh, whatever works for you. Um, so. 
that's uh, that's the part of working together. Just very quickly and roughly, uh, some things to think about. That's the main thing. I want you to keep thinking about um, what is happening and which parts actually make a team and an EOS project and how you can improve on those. Um, I will add some steps of things that you can do. Uh, first of all, look at customer collaboration. It's something, uh, if I get into new projects, I often feel that is super undervalued. So there is a weekly tel teco with the client, and you get new information. Someone writes it down. Um, then there's a, a line of whispering. And uh, finally, someone gets the information out, and something totally different um, happens because uh, there was no clear communication, and you didn't really collaborate with the client, you wrote something down and it didn't, uh, the message didn't, didn't uh, arrive correctly. So um, close, work closely together with your client, involve them in the process and um, get them to look at the things you do while you do them and not at the end. Uh, ubiquitous language is something uh, that comes from the technical side of things, but I feel it applies very well to this here. Um, it's the idea of having a common language between the client and your team, um, which is the core language of uh, whatever you work on. So try to understand what your client is telling you. They have the knowledge. I mean, you're building a website for their clients and their users. Uh, so if it's about airplanes, try to understand what the words are that are used together with airplanes that uh, the real terms, don't try to invent terms that might feel easier or, or might feel more correct for you, because they are not. They know what the correct terms are. So um, get this together, write down a dictionary if you must, if the words are too difficult to remember, but use the words the client uses, otherwise it will be a mess in the end. It's really a learning I have from a lot of projects. You don't want to deal with three different names for the same thing in a project that will always go wrong. Uh, then I needed a picture, so I put this in. And the people in the back row might notice the monocle. That's what I want to point to. Um, I actually really like to work with atomic design because it uh, allows you a lot of reasoning about uh, design and creating a big system, uh, a big website, because there you need to have a structure in the design, and that is very well done with uh, atomic design and the award-winning monocle tool really helps with that so uh, please use that uh, it's it's really a core tool for neos development for me um, so you should look at that atomic design and using monocle as a style guide together with your client please that's again the client collaboration and then um, that is something I rarely, rarely experience, but looking at content first is super important. If you do a, a, a website about airplanes, get some, some data, get the content they have. Uh, look at the pictures, look at the data. They might have tables of 300 lines of information, technical information about the planes that needs to go to the website. And you want to know that at the beginning of the project and not three quarters in, because then your design and your user experience will not work with that. So look at the content first and the actual content. Um, the earlier you can work in your prototype with actual data and information and pictures from the client and not with dummy text uh, is a huge benefit for you. Um, same goes for working prototype. Um, I like to create something that is working as, as fast as possible and show it to the client. Uh, I really don't like this, uh, yeah, we will do a three months design phase and then you get the PDF with the perfect design and uh, everything is great. Uh, no, show them, show them work in progress. Let them choose early on what, is, what they like and what they don't like and then improve on that. So that's also something I really like to do. Culture, I said it, please take care of your culture in the team. Then you can build a team. I would look at all the other stuff before and then start building the team because then you have a good foundation. Uh, then start involving end users if you can. It's obviously super hard to get your, your client to give you their users. Uh, but if you can, 
try to find at least a few users that actually will use the website, the application, the tool that you're building, and let them try it as early as possible, just like your client. And then finally, inspect, adapt, and iterate. And finally, I think there's no silver bullet. You need to figure it out. Uh, if you keep all that in mind and get help, people that know a lot, that have experience in this area, uh, you can always improve your team and your experience. But from my experience, there's not the one silver bullet. If someone goes in and tells you, you need to do Scrum and it will be perfect, don't trust that person. Maybe look at other things and figure out if Scrum really is the thing you want to do. Because there are other tools and maybe Scrum is not the right one for you. So yeah, no silver bullet. But there's Das Perfecte Team, which is our German podcast about teams. So if you're a German speaker, uh, I invite you to listen to our podcast where we talk with people that have much more knowledge in this area than me and uh, figure out how this works with teams and agile. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christian. Um, is there a pressing question? We have time for one only. Someone else? No, Gina? <laughs> Gina is asking the diff difficult questions. I don't want to ask. <laughs> and and you, can, you can catch Christian anytime. Go ahead. <laughs> what's, what's your question? Uh. <laughs> well, uh, thanks a lot. One thing I was really missing from your list of things that interact and are important for teams uh, is the question of incentives. And this is especially important because they are totally different when we are talking about open source projects and open source teams like a Neos team, or if you're talking about employees, Obviously. or if you're talking uh, about freelance teams. And especially interesting, in my experience, if you're talking about client engagement. Yes. So client engagement, I think the key is to understand whom you're talking to, what their incentives are, because the business owner most of the time has no time for you at all. Uh, and the business heads are completely different than those from the marketing lady and those of the tech guys. Sometimes they guys, you want to work with you. And my experience is that you, if, you, if you can harvest those incentives or if you can provide them, uh, this is more the, 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 the key for, for an effective team for me, one of the, one of the keys. Yeah. Um, and at some point I, have to have, I, I got the impression that as, as a project lead, this is my, my primary goal to, to cater to, uh, to everybody's um, uh, incentive, that mean understanding them first. Maybe you have some experience or idea um, how this could be, I wouldn't say process because that's not how you do it, it's an individual thing, but just, just to, to put it more, more in, in, into your head to understand what yeah. people want on the, from a project. I get what you mean. On the individual level. No, no, I get what you mean. And I'm, diff di I'm, I'm not the right person to ask this. Uh, I have no clue about incentives. I say that very, very bluntly because for me, if I work in this kind of team with all the stuff I told you about my personal experience, I have intrinsic, intrinsic motivation. I want to do this. I want to build the perfect product. Even if it's not Neos, if it's a client project, I don't care with a client. If it's this kind of culture and atmosphere, I do it because I want to do it. Obviously, I have to live, so I need some kind of money. But what? Yeah, exactly. That is my, but I don't have experience about any other ex incentives because that is my prime incentive and I always deal with that and I cannot deal with other incentives. That's, that's my answer, basically. I, that is the only incentive I can work with. So, uh, yeah, you can offer me a lot of money, but if, if it's not a good team, no. Nope. Thank you very much, Christian.